So now we get the engine on the stand, we're just going to pull off our torque plate. We're going to cover this up and then we're going to go ahead and start assembling our piston and rod combinations. We've already gapped our rings, so we're just going to put those on the pistons and then we'll go ahead and start assembling. Okay, we've got our pistons and rod laid out now. We're going to go ahead, we're going to bust off the caps and all the rods, and then we'll go ahead and put the piston and rod assemblies together, and then we'll move on to put the rings on the pistons. Okay, so next up we're going to install our uh, piston pins uh, clips for uh, one side for the uh, rod and piston assembly. Um, so what I usually like to do is install the clip about halfway in here and then rotate it in. Now the easy thing to do is just get the tips of the clip into the groove and then you can slide your pin in from the back side and then snap it into place. And I always like to do one clip on one side, always on the same side, just so it's easy to uh, install the other side. You don't have to fight with both sides when you go to install it. So. Um, for now, we're going to put one clip on the side of the piston that does not have the jet relief and we'll do that six times and then we'll go ahead and assemble them together. Okay, so now that we have all of our pins in on one side of our pistons, we're going to go ahead now and assemble our rod and piston assemblies. We're just going to put the assembly loop inside the rod, inside the piston, and then around the pin itself. We'll slip them together and we'll slap our pin in on the other side. Okay, so a couple things to note when you're assembling these. Um, the JZ piston has an install position, um, whether it's CP or OEM. Um, one thing to note, larger valve cutouts on the intake side because the intake valves are larger. Secondary one is the oil jet. Um, squirter, whatever you want to call it, that uh, squirts out from the bottom. Also has a little cutout relief. You want to make sure that's positioned correctly. So next up, the manly rod. When you put the manly rod into the piston, um, it doesn't really have an install position. The OEM ones do, um, but for uh, the sake of uh, consistency, we're just going to put the manly logo facing forward. Um, so we're going to match the forward of the piston with the forward of the rod, and then we're going to assembly loop our piston pin, and we're going to install it. Now just verify quickly, have the install position correctly, manly rod facing forward, intake valve is facing to the intake side, and the oil jet is facing in the correct area. Now when you're installing the uh, piston pin clip in the JZ piston, it's a little more difficult. Um, on the RB piston, the, the pin is located a little bit higher, so it gives you a bit more of a, a shoulder to press, it, press this into the piston. Um, so it might take you a couple of tries, uh, but a very similar procedure to the other side without having the pin installed. You're going to want to try and push this in and squeeze this down. You might have to remove some of the assembly lube from the piston just so you're not slippering and sliding around here. Now when you do get this one in here partially, they are known to kind of shoot out, um, so be careful. So now if you can manage to get the, the um, piston pin clip into the groove, um, it's fairly easy from there. You can just press it down into the groove. Um, if you're concerned about removal, um, you can try and rotate it so it aligns a little bit better with there. But for uh, our sake, um, just getting it installed is, is good enough. Um, they're quite a uh, pain to get in there. Again, watch out if it does go in there halfway and you let go, it could shoot out, so be careful. Okay, we're gonna go ahead now. We're gonna install our piston rings onto the pistons. Um, so just like we did in the RBA video, we're gonna start with our oil control rings. Um, the squiggly wiggly one goes on first at the very bottom. Um, this one is basically just to support the thinner, less pressure oil rings. Um, so we're just gonna rotate these on here. The first three are really, really easy to install. Um, one thing to note with these ones, um, we're gonna be orientating them. They're a little difficult to orientate when you um, have all three of them installed. So just try and keep in mind um, uh, the orientation beforehand. So um, typically what we're gonna do for the ring orientation is um, the top ring is gonna go towards the exhaust side at about a, let's say 45 degree angle from from the piston pin um, center line. 
about a 45 degree angle. Then the um, second ring is going to go on the opposite side at about, or sorry, opposite of the piston, 45 degree angle. <clears throat> and then your oil control ring, top one, about a 45 this way, and then the bottom one about a 45 this way and then the squiggly line in the middle or the squiggly uh, ring in the middle that you're going to want to um you can pivot it towards this side or this side doesn't matter really which way you just want to make sure that they're evenly spaced as best as possible ideally your top two are the most important ones so you want to make sure those are opposite of each other wherever you put the gap ideally about a 45 from the piston pin um, center line okay we're going to go ahead now we're going to install our second um, piston ring these have already been gapped we did that in a previous video so before you go ahead and put it on just quickly again, make sure you don't have any leftover burrs or anything like that on the rings. And if you do find anything, um, just quickly go ahead, file it off, and then we'll go ahead and install it. Okay, so once you've confirmed you have no burrs on your piston ring, um, for the number two Jay-Z ring, typically it's going to have an oil scraping groove on it. Um, so on the back side, there's a bit of a sharp edge on it. So that goes down in the cylinder. Um, so you're going to want to just... I prefer to roll the rings onto the piston. Some people use the ring expander. Um, I've never had good luck with the expander. I prefer to roll it on so you're not doing too much stretching of the ring. Um, so place it on the piston and then you're slowly going to want to walk it around inside the groove. And as you put it into the groove around the piston, it gets easier to install it. Um, so as you roll it onto the piston, it'll just get easier to install. And then you're going to want to just pick up this end here just above the surface of the piston and place it inside. And then you're good to go. Um, remember your orientation. This one goes on the intake side and then the top ring. Um, this one also does have a, an upward um, um, position. Now the marking on the ring itself is clear, um, but if you did happen to get a ring that has no markings, sometimes there is a chamfer on the ring. This one does not have that. So we're just going to go off the marking and we're going to face that upwards. Same thing as the second ring. Walk it around in the groove. Once you get to this point, you can just pick it up off the surface, place it in the groove. And then remember, orientate your rings. You can do it now or you can do it when you go to install it in the block. I prefer to do it now, then I just verify later. To recap, our top ring, major thrust side on the exhaust side on the uh, JZ. Um, then the second ring is on the minor thrust side on the intake side on the JZ. And then our oil control ring gap top ring is here 45 from this one bottom one is here 45 from this one and then the actual slit in the middle oil control ring is on the edge so we'll consider that one done we'll repeat that for all six of them and then we're going to go ahead and install it in the block Alright, so we've got our piston pins, or our piston rings installed to our pistons. We're going to go ahead now and start installing them to the block. Um, we've orientated our rings. Um, we've positioned our piston onto our rod in the correct orientation. Um, so now we're just going to remove the caps, apply our assembly lube. Um, we're going to lube up the side of our piston and our rings. And then uh, do the same thing with our piston ring compressor from ARP. And then we'll start popping them into the block and uh, we'll start torquing our rods down. Okay, so next up we're going to torque down our rod bolts. Um, first off, always ARP lube bolts and head under the head. Um, the torque spec for these bolts is going to be um, uh, 5, 8, tau, 
to 6.2 thou. Um, so it's going to be 0 0.0058 to 0 0.0062 um, or 60 foot pounds. Um, we're going to set our torque gauge to 60 foot pounds. Uh, we'll measure the length of our bolt, not tightened down, and then we're going to torque it to 60, measure it, and then hopefully we land in our range. If we don't, we'll just uh, up the foot pounds a little bit and uh, until we get into that range. And then we'll know that it is torqued to specification, uh, the maximum tensile strength of the bolt um, to operate it. And when you're tightening down the bolt, again, we're going to want to bring the bolt almost tight or almost touching. Just back it off a little bit, just so it's not totally touching the rod. Any sort of pressure on it will start to measure the stretch. And then we're going to set our stretch gauge on here, make sure it's centered in the bolt, and then you're going to zero it. Now with these tools, you always got to make sure that your pins are tight, the tip is tight and clean. So we set to zero there, and then we're going to torque it down. Okay, so once you've got your bolt torqued down to specification, we're going to make sure that our stretch is accurate. And we land at about just over 6 thou, so we're within specification there. Uh, we're going to repeat that same process for every bolt and make sure that we are at the uh, right specification, maximum um, torque for this kind of bolt, and uh, it should have a long life. All right, so now we've finished up. We've put our uh, piston and rod assembly into the block. We've torqued our rods um, with the stretch method. Um, again, that just ensures you have the maximum amount of torque on the bolt that it's capable of seeing. It gives you an extra, extra strong clamping force um, to withstand the power levels the engine might see. Um, so from now, moving forward, we're gonna be um, cleaning the rest of the accessories for this engine. We're gonna start assembling um, the rest of the block and then we're gonna move on to the cylinder head. Um, a little bit of work to do there. It's a brand new OEM cylinder head. Um, so we're just gonna be doing a um, measuring shims, installing the um, valves, lapping the valves, valve seals and stuff like that. So you have some stuff to look forward to in the rest of this uh, series. But for now, we're gonna wrap this up here. <music>